Good morning. And happy Thanksgiving. What a great place to be for giving thanks here at Mumsey. I'm Marcia Schwager, and I'm subbing for Pastor Sue today. So welcome to the Mequon United Methodist Church. And I invite you, all of you should have gotten a little white blank card. I'd like you to take time to answer this question. I'm looking for a simple suggestion of how to help one another. Something simple. Maybe you're helping a friend, maybe a neighbor, maybe the person next to you in your pew, maybe a stranger. What's a simple way that you can help someone? And during the first hymn, the ushers will collect those and give them to me up here. So I welcome you, and I ask you to center yourself as we prepare for worship. Thank you. Please rise and join me in the call to worship. Called by worship to your service, forth in your dear name we go to the child, the youth, the aged, love in living deeds show. Hope and health, goodwill and comfort, counsel, aid and peace we give that your servants, Lord, in freedom, may your mercy know and live. The opening hymn this morning is number 512 in the Blue Hymnal.
standing and join me in the opening prayer. Heavenly Father, accept us each as Christ accepted us. Teach us as sister, brother, and each person to embrace. Be present, Lord, among us, and bring us to believe that we ourselves are accepted and meant to love and live. Teach us, O Lord, your lessons as your daily life we struggle to become human and search for hope and faith. Teach us to care for other people, for all, not just for some, to love them as we find them or as they may become. righteousness and bread. We need new eyes for seeing, new hands for holding on. Renew us in your spirit, Lord. Free us, make us one. Amen. Now, we're already standing. Let us greet each other in the name of Christ.
if we could have Glenn and the children come forward. I guess Carolyn said no, huh? Good morning. How's everybody? I've got a question to ask you this morning. What does it mean to be rich? What does it take to be rich? What do you think? Yeah, Charlie says have a, a, a pretty good job so you make a pretty amount of money, right? Anything else that, uh, so money is involved for if you make you rich? I'm going to ask you to take something. Take one of those. Now, what, what is that? Penny? Does it make you rich? No? All right, let's try something else. This is only going so far, by the way. Whoa. Got it? OK, how much is that? 25 cents? Does that make you rich? What if I gave you a $10 bill? Would that make you rich? How about $100? Yeah? Maybe a thousand or a million? Huh? I'm not really certain what makes somebody rich these days. I'm not certain how much money. We have to have some money. We have to have money for certain things, don't we? We have to have money to buy groceries, to have a house, have a car. We even have to have some money to give back to the church, don't we? But I think there's other ways to be rich. I think you're rich if you have a really, really good friend. Do each of you have a really, really good friend? Hmm? You do? All right. I think that makes you very rich if you have a good friend. I think it makes you rich if you serve people or help people. If you help people do things, do you think that makes you rich? Okay. How about uh, if somebody loves you? Does that make you rich? Mom and dad, grandpas and grandmas. I see uh, Charlie and Jimmy with their little sister back there. I think she loves you too. And uh, you know, and just as importantly, or probably more importantly, God loves us all the time, doesn't he? He loves us. No, even when we mess up, God loves us. So uh, there's a lot of ways to be rich, and, mo and I think money is just one of them, but maybe it's not the most important. Do you agree? Okay. Let's say a prayer, then you can go to class. Heavenly Father, thank you for these beautiful children. Help them to understand that there's ways to be rich besides money. Amen. While the kids are heading to class, I invite everyone to get their hymnal out and turn to page 780. We're going to do a responsive reading the old-fashioned way, meaning it's not going to be up on the screen. So page 780, it's Psalm 46, and we're going to do response number two for the singing. Elna will play it through one full time, and then every time we see the red R, we will sing response number two. So page 780. Alna? Be 
refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city, which shall not be moved. God will help it at the dawn of the day. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. God's voice resounds, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Be still and know that I Behold the works of the Lord, who has wrought desolation in the earth, who makes war cease to the end of the earth, breaks the bow, shatters the spear, and burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Be still and know that I am God, the Lord of hosts is with us. The Gospel reading this morning comes from two sources, Matthew and a surprise winner, John. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. <clears throat> then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothed you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you that whenever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then from John, my command is this, love each other as you have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. This is the word of God for the people of God. I'd like to share some headlines with you. A police officer and two employees were killed in Chicago hospital shooting. Multiple people shot in downtown Denver. What do you take with you when you only have five minutes to flee a wildfire? Infant suffers brain damage after cocaine exposure. How do these make you feel? Are you angry? Maybe sad, numb from all the headlines, maybe tired, exhausted. How about helpless? Maybe even paralyzed. Couple all of these natural disasters and violence 
with the vitriolic nature of the discourse in our country right now, how does that make you feel? Combine all that together. How do you react? Do you find yourself closing yourself off from conversation with friends because you're afraid of their reaction? Does it affect your ability to function in everyday life? It's 24 seven. I personally call my reaction to these headlines, headline helplessness. I read, I see, I listen to all these bad things going on in the world, and I feel helpless to do anything about it. At times, personally, it even makes me depressed. Sometimes I get a headache from it all. Basically, all of this bad news affects me physically and mentally. And I have found myself sometimes actually closing myself off from people. And I probably feel that I'm not alone in this response. Viewing tragedy in the news has been proven to cause PTSD in some people, post-traumatic stress syndrome. After the Boston Marathon bombing in April of 2013, the University of California, Irvine, published a study that assessed the level of stress symptoms affecting people who watched the bombing on TV, social media, in print, and on, listen to it on the radio. They found that, quote, acute stress symptoms increased with each additional hour of bombing-related media exposure. And as a result, the US Department of Veteran Affairs for PTSD concluded that there was a link between watching the news of traumatic events and stress symptoms. Further, they found that people who had previously experienced stress suffered a cumulative effect that intensified their reactions. In other words, seeing scary experiences actually creates a biochemical event in your body, whether we are experiencing them directly or through empathy with others. And people who have previous trauma exposure are especially vulnerable. So let's look back at our Bible passage readings this morning. In Matthew, when considering the hungry and the poor, we are told, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Followed by the message from John. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one life, one's life for one's friends. Wow. First, you're stressed out by all the negative news, all the disasters going on in the world, and now we're overwhelmed and incapacitated by our inability to do anything. I mean, it's one thing to donate a bag of clothes. It's another thing to lay down your life for one's friends. So let's break this down to two questions. What is your tipping point for negative news? And number two, what can you do to help? As just described, some of us are more influenced by negative news than others. So the first step is to manage your reaction to the negative news. You have to become self-aware of when your limits are reached. And this depends on your level of empathy. People have different levels of empathy. The greater your empathy, the greater your ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes, to share their experience, the lower your tolerance for seeing tragedy without being hurt yourself. The Good News Network offers four guidelines for keeping yourself safe from emotionally harmful news. We could have the next slide. First, use compassion rather than empathy. What's the difference? Well, compassion is feeling sympathy, sorrow, or pity for someone, understanding the troubles they're having, while empathy is putting yourself in their shoes. You need to establish clear emotional boundaries by reminding yourself this isn't happening to you. And you don't have to feel someone else's pain to help them. Instead of walking in their shoes, walk compassionately beside them. The next. Second is be a savvy reader. 
The news' job is to sell news, and they do this oftentimes by sensationalizing it in their headlines. So be a savvy reader. Oftentimes it doesn't take much to read a few paragraphs to realize the disaster is really a minor bump in the road. So be a savvy reader. Number three. Turn away from headlines and especially pictures that generate bad feelings. Studies have shown that when you couple a headline with a photo, the reaction is much more intense because the photo is interpreted on the right side of your brain, which generates an automatic response, one you don't have control over. How many of us here remember when photos and videos of the Vietnam War first came into our living rooms? how that intensified our interpretation and reaction to war. And lastly, you need to be able to monitor your reactions, to, again, to increase self-awareness so that you can be in control, because emotions often have a life of their own, and to control them, you have to understand them. Now, I would like to add one more to this list. Remember the psalm reading we just had? Be still and know that I am God. The Lord of hosts is with us. We don't have to go this alone. God is with us. He is our refuge and our strength. Don't forget, you have someone on your side. So now that we have some tips for improving our coping mechanisms for all the negative news out there, how do we help people? Jesus taught us we should help people. How do we do that? In February 2016, there was a study published in Psychosomatic Medicine. What a name of a magazine. Psychosomatic Medicine, where researchers used MRI brain imaging techniques to pinpoint specific brain benefits of giving social benefits to others. Research, research showed that giving social support was associated with increased activity in the brain area that functions as part of the reward system during an affiliative task. An affiliative task is when we are showing affection. So by helping others, it triggers the brain that's associated with affection. These changes with the brain help to explain why altruism and giving support has multiple health benefits. So if we can control our negative reactions and we can master the sense of giving, it's a win-win situation for everyone involved. But how can we help? How can we give? I'm not sure about you, but laying down my life for a friend seems like a one and done proposition, doesn't it? Just like managing negative news, we need to manage our giving. This brings me to the um, title of today's sermon, Serving Up a Little Helping, and we're not talking about mashed potatoes. An example is in order. I'm very proud of the fact that Kelsey 26 and Sam 23 still ask me for help. Sometimes I can help a lot, sometimes I can only help a little. For example, Kelsey moved from a, um, an apartment in uh, the suburbs of Chicago to the Lakeview area of Chicago to a condo there, and I helped a lot. For days I packed boxes, I moved, I carried, I cleaned carpets, I helped a lot. And then there's Sam, who often asks me to help proof some of her papers. And as many of you know, she's a doctoral student at Vanderbilt in biomedical engineering. So I'd like to show you an excerpt. OK. A nanoparticle cytokine therapy to reprogram tumor-associated microphages. Here we propose the use of a cytokine therapy encompassing nanoparticle to target and program TAMs. We hyp uh, hypothesize that interferon gamma and CPG can reprogram TAMs using a two-signal mechanism to exhibit an M1 autotumor phenotype. What? Needless to say, I, I sort of asked Sam, really? You really want me to proof this? I have no idea what I just read. And she says, oh, mom, mom, don't worry. You're here to proof grammar. Make sure my commas are in the right place. I have a friend, Lauren, who's going to check the content. <laughs> commas, verb tenses, that I can do. And I actually found some errors, I must admit. So I didn't help a lot with this, but I could help a little, because commas, I could do. And my first response when she asked this was really funny. This is the truth. I said, wow, Sam, your graphs are really pretty. That was my response when she asked me. So these two examples are really meant to illustrate sometimes we're capable of helping a lot and sometimes only a little, but they're both meaningful. 
Let's go back to our Bible reading, and I think we need to listen to this in a non-literal sense. From Matthew, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. And from John, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friend. When we look at these passages literally, we seem to be directed to help the poor, those without food or drink or clothing or shelter. I'm sure many of you here are familiar with Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is our next slide. When we think of the basic needs on the bottom of the pyramid, these are the food, the clothes, the shelter. But this isn't the only way we can help people. If you think of it in a literal sense, it is. But in a figurative sense, once those needs are satisfied, there are other needs that we as human beings still need, psychological needs and self-fulfillment needs. So while we can't stop fires or earthquakes or violence from afar, maybe there's something we can do to help those nearby. Maybe we can serve up a little helping with the person next door, with the person in the grocery line, with the person on the treadmill next to you in the gym, or maybe the person sitting next to you in the pew. Most likely, these people already have satisfied their basic needs of food and clothing and shelter. But what about the higher needs on these pyramids? What little things can we do within our reach to feel like we're helping them to belong, to have a friend, to feel good about themselves, to help them reach their potential? And this should sound familiar because this is the question I asked earlier. And I would like to share some of the suggestions that your fellow pewmates have answered. Make a surprise meal for a busy family. Talk to someone. And I can't read the rest of it. <laughs> Give some wild game and fish to friends and relatives. Ask, may I help? Invite a lonely person to lunch. A simple smile or a hello, this may make someone feel better. There were several smiles, so smile was a popular one. Be kind. Smile at a stranger. Shovel a neighbor's uh, snow. Put away your toys. Help mom and dad with projects. Have constant and unwavering prayer with communication to prayer recipient. The prayers are ongoing. Be by his or her side during both the good times and the hard times. Give a hug. Be kind and joyful and smile. Look in on someone not feeling well or is hospitalized. Or offer a ride or do an errand. Very great suggestions and simple. I also suggest there are many things you can do in this church. A few uh, weeks ago, Marilyn pointed out many of the opportunities here in the church to help others, such as Family Promise, or maybe help out with the Sunday school, or maybe be on a committee. Those are helping others as well. So now, what about this lay down your life for one's friends? For me, this passage is all about intent. You just don't help someone to help someone. You need to help someone like your life depended on it. Help someone like they're your daughter or your husband or your father or your brother. Help others not just because it's the right thing to do, because you want to do it. You can reach out to a person next door in this community, in this church. You can make a difference by saying hello or holding open a door or sending a card or giving words of encouragement. So we're not just helping with basic needs. We're helping with the whole person. So in summary, how can we counter our headline helplessness? To the next slide. It's serving up a little helping. Learn how to control your reaction to the news and learn how you can help others. Don't be paralyzed. Just by serving up a little helping, but doing it with intent, 
We not only help others, we help ourselves. This is not a one and done endeavor, but the gift that keeps on giving. Help those that are hungry for a friend, thirsting for acceptance, and do it as if your life depended on it. Amen. Let us now join together in hymn 593, Here I Am, Lord. Now is the time for sharing our joys and concerns. Do we have any joys and concerns? The ushers have microphones to help assist. Yeah. I know mine works. I have a joy to share. Um, we, my son and I, Mike, went 
we're going to go to the meal site on Thursday morning and help prepare the meal. So I arrived at his condo in downtown Milwaukee. He said, come on up. I'm thinking, it's time to go. We've got to get there. Well, actually, we're going to do the turkey trot first, but we didn't. Because <laughs> when I got upstairs, he says, hi, Mom. And his girlfriend's standing next to him with her hand over her heart. And there was a shiny ring on it. So Mike got engaged Thursday, Thursday morning. So. Does your mic work? That one works. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, three years ago, we asked for prayers for Peyton Leutner, who was uh, the victim in the Slender Man stabbing. And we talked to her dad yesterday, and she's doing much better. She's, she's, she's made some great strides in her recovery, and she now wants to be a doctor. Anyone else? You've got a mic. On behalf of Mary and Caitlin and myself, we share a great joy because we have Federico. Federico, would you just stand up for a second? That is Federico. He is from Italy, and he is an AFS student attending Homestead High School. And his host family is over in Asia, seeing the sights, and also attending the wedding of one of their former ASF students. So while they're gone, we have the great joy of having him stay with us. Bienvenuto. <laughs> he is a very gregarious guy, so please walk up and introduce yourself when, after the service today, and he would enjoy meeting all of you. Anyone else? Well, I'd like to share a quick joy. We spent uh, Thanksgiving down in Nashville, and about 20 relatives came from Ohio and Virginia and South Carolina, and we all converged there, and it had been almost seven years, I think, we had, since we'd all been together, so it was a great joy. And Sam's the only one that lives in Nashville. Somehow we all got there, so it was a great joy for us. Yes? Congratulations. We have a lot of talented people in this church. Well, keeping all these joys in our hearts, let's pray. Dear Lord, we come to you with thanksgiving in our heart, but we also come to you asking for strength and guidance as we face the challenges of everyday life. We find ourselves often unsure of where to go or what to do. Help us to know you are with us always. That we can always turn to you for guidance. Give us the strength to reach out to you and then to turn to others with that strength and offer a friendly smile, a helping hand, knowing that doing so with love and compassion for our family, friends, neighbors, and strangers we are acting as you have taught us. Let us now take a few moments for silent prayer. Amen. Let us now join together with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us.
as time begins to collapse around the Thanksgiving to Christmas to New Year's to we know, heavens knows what, there are some certain things that I'd like to remind our congregation that we have made commitments to ourselves and the community to make happen. Today, the offering plate will be passed and those uh, have some time to put the commitment cards, the uh, time and talent side, the poinsettia purchase, uh, it goes on and on and on, but don't hesitate to put anything that you need to communicate to the uh, preacher and her staff, uh, that's, that's what comes in today's uh, offering plate. The children's ministry needs some adult supervision in terms of safe harbor laws to protect both the children and the adult teachers and we're, we're asking for volunteers to be just observer buddies in the Sunday school class. It allows us to uh, meet all kinds of legal requirements and still promote the values that we hold dear to ourselves. The charge conference will be November 26th. It's when we vote on uh, the pastor's salary and certain other business that comes before the congregation. We ask that uh, you come November 6th is Monday, right? Yeah, okay, at six o'clock. And we really need a, a good representation of the congregation so that uh, yeah, we, we know we're on the right track. The Bel Canto singers, our senior singers, are giving a concert on Thursday the 29th, 7 o'clock at night. It's free. These people are awesome musicians. And as we were coming into church this morning, I was reminded that Monday is also St. Cecilia's Day. Well, St. Cecilia is the patron saint of all musicians. So as I talked uh, several years ago, it's uh, a wonderful opportunity to show your support for musicians by right? taking one, one of them to lunch. So. <coughs> Hanging in the Greens, Saturday, December 1st, 9 a.m. This is a tradition here at MUMC and we uh, make light work if a bunch of us show up and it's a terrible chore if only one shows up. So I, I ask that you find a little time to help hang the greens and it will help us with our festive outlook. We went down to the St. Vincent de Paul meal site uh, on Thursday and served the Thanksgiving dinner, dessert, turkey, dressing, mashed potatoes. I want to publicly thank all those of the congregation that were involved and remind us that we have five Thursdays in this month. MUMC has stepped up and normally serves once a month on Thursday, but when there's more than four, we pick up the slack. We are in need of dessert and fresh fruit that can be carried out of the uh, meal site to really make this program viable and it's, it's a wonderful outreach to the, the community. We have a Christmas giving tree that's out in the narthex. I direct your uh, attention to that. Hopefully uh, we'll get everybody to take at least one item off the tree and return with, with a little present to, to make some disadvantaged 
people's Christmas a little, little more joyful. It's coming on to winter, and we, as an MUMC, are running a winter clothing drive for all those that, you know, were moving apartments and came up with extra cold weather gear. Here's a place to bring them, and we'll make sure they get recycled and in at the, the hands of those who really need the clothing. Many of the uh, clothing drives that I've seen here in Milwaukee hit their peak at about uh, January 30th to February 15. Well, by that time, most of the people that really need the winter clothing are stiffed out. So, you know, let's let's uh, look at the hall closet and see if there might be something that could be repurposed and bring it in. We'll make sure it gets delivered to the, the proper place. That's all the keynote items that uh, they suggest that your letter just underline. I'm sure there's a bunch of them that we can exchange information in the narthex when we're going to the, the coffee. And uh, you know, look forward to seeing how this congregation lives up to its reputation of being a, a small but mighty church. And I uh, ask that everybody help us At this point, will, you, will the uh, ushers come forth and accept our offerings?
Dear Lord, accept these gifts as our giving of thanks to you. We know that you are with us daily in all that we do. We pledge to you that we as a congregation will use these gifts to help others to do good in your name. We ask that you guide us as we serve and love others as you have taught us. Amen. Let us now join together in hymn 581 in your hymnal. We're only going to sing verses 1 and 4. Marilyn got that? 1 and 4. forth into the world knowing that we can make a difference in the lives of others, that the Lord will stand by each one of us as we say, here I am, Lord. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you. 